right, Kim, today's your day. You're going to get them off. You excited? Yeah. I yeah. am excited. Yeah. 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 How long does it take? How long does it take to get your... A little over a year. Oh, gosh. I, you know, I remember when we started, we thought we might have to take out a tooth, and, uh, you know, we were going back and forth about that, yeah. and then finally decided not to, and it worked out perfectly. Perfectly. Good. Look at those Good. toppers. Oh, <laughs> you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Well, so what we're going to do today is take the braces off, polish and shape those beautiful choppers you've got there, and, and show folks how we use a new splinted retainer wire called Retanium. Uh, what's cool is that when you leave today, these two bonded splints will be the only retainers you need at this point. So we're going to demonstrate how to use Reliance Orthodontics patented new lingual retention wire, Retanium, in the art of semi-permanent retention. Retanium is a blade-thin ribbon of titanium wire that is incredibly malleable and micro-etched to enhance its overall retention characteristics. As you can see from Kim's original photo, she had a great deal of crowding in the lower arch uh, to the point where we had at least considered removing a single lower incisor. We chose to bond every tooth with a splinted retanium 3 to 3 to help prevent relapse of the originally severe rotations in the lower especially in that lower central incisor area. A traditional 3 to 3 would have not been a very good choice in this circumstance. We used the Damon bracket system to treat Kim mainly because we wanted to treat the lower incisors very gingerly and uh, with the lightest of forces to try to avoid uh, any more labial tissue loss. As you can see here we were able to largely achieve that goal. Um, these are her intraorals just prior to bracket removal. We start off by cutting off a section of the retanium wire and gently curving it between our forefinger and thumb. I then place a slight gable that will demarcate the contact between the cuspid and lateral on one side. I place the wire back in the mouth and proceed to mark the same gable at the opposite lateral cuspid contact. We trim the lengths of the wire so that the gabled ends cover about two-thirds of the cuspid width, as you can see here. This is all the bending that's necessary on this highly formable wire. Next we begin to prepare the patient's teeth first with intraoral microetching with silica sand. This may be the single most important step to assure long-term retention. The patient's teeth are then thoroughly rinsed and dried. I like to use uh, an isolating device called, uh, quite simply, a, a cotton roll holder. Uh, this is made by American Orthodontics, and as you can see here, it's quite effective at isolating the target teeth, and, and yet at the same time, it gives you adequate space to work in the lingual vault. Next, we extrude a gel etchant on the lingual surfaces of the target teeth. Since we only need about 20 to 30 seconds of etching time per tooth, by the time we finish placing the etching on the last tooth, it's time to go back and start rinsing and thoroughly drying, starting again where we began. Now, after we've thoroughly desiccated the teeth, uh, I paint a, a coat of Assure Hydrophilic Universal Primer uh, on the, each of the teeth. If the teeth still look a little frosty, go ahead and paint on a second coat. Remember, no standard light cure sealant is used here at all. Next, we place five loops of dental floss into the contact, starting with the left lateral cuspid contact and finishing at the right lateral cuspid contact. Leave these loops nice and open so that you can easily guide the retanium wire into the loops. The dental floss is then snugged up to bring the wire into the correct position on the teeth. I use a, a curved how plier or wine guard to swage the wire flat against the lingual surfaces of the teeth. Uh, this is important because it reduces any remaining space between the teeth and the wire and helps reduce the amount of composite that we end up using. Okay, now it's time to add composite to our lingual wire. We use a very thick base light cure composite made specifically for lower lingual retainers by Reliance. We don't want to use a flowable composite because first, it wears more easily, and, and second, it does flow all over the teeth, uh, making removal much more difficult than just popping buttons of composite off of the teeth. If the flowable gets into the gingival sulcus, it just becomes much more difficult for final cleanup. Once a small dollop of composite has been added to each tooth, 
I'll smooth it with the styrofoam pledge it soaked in a sheer bonding enhancer. I then cure the composite from the incisal edge of the teeth. Remove the dental floss and voila, we have a long-term retinium splinted retainer. The final splint should have clean contacts for flossing, individual nodules of composite covering only the wire from contact to contact, and smoothness for patient comfort. The upper retinium splint has a few different twists in its fabrication. We start off with a section of wire that extends about three quarters of the way through the lateral incisors. Using a bird beak plier, a small upward gable of the wire is made at the central lateral contact. This creates a small smile in the wire that prevents interferences at the lateral when cemented. If we could look through the teeth, the wire placement would look just like this. Again, we micro etch the target teeth, use a gel etch, rinse and dry, and paint on a sure universal sealant. Notice that the only isolation needed here is a cotton roll in the vestibule. Three pieces of dental floss are placed and the wire fed into the loops. Again, the wire is swaged and positioned flat against the teeth. Composite is added and it's smoothed with an Assure Soak Pledget. Now this is critical. Have the patient close completely and do the initial cure from the labial. This will demarcate any interferences with the lower teeth in the composite. This can then be smoothed with a diamond finishing burr to allow for complete closure. Sometimes it's necessary to spot the anterior contacts with articulating paper to relieve any interferences. Kim's final result, seen here, should allow her to close completely with the splints in place without any occlusal interferences. Let's see how they are. Oh, look at those teeth. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Hilgers. Thank you, Dr. Nissen. They came out better than I thought they would. I guess you know what you're doing. Oh my God.